Today I'm going to replace a bilge pump on my boat. Um, I've got a rule uh, 360 gallon per hour pump. Um, it still works um, as far as the motor and the uh, impeller. Still moves a lot of water. Um, but the problem is, is the, the connection where the hose goes has been broken. So it's been broken off. It's actually still, a, the other part of this is still attached to the uh, rubber hose with the hose clamp on it. So um, maybe it just deteriorated. Maybe it had water and froze and bust. I don't know. I'm not sure. But uh, we're going to put a new one on there because this is the bilge pump. So, you know, if you get a pretty good leak or something, you know, you need that pump in there. Or maybe maybe you get waves that come sloshing water over. Uh, I don't know. But that's always a possibility. But um, anyway, I'm working on a Pro 18 uh, Bass Tracker, 1997 model. And um, this is the, uh, the boat that we're working on here. It's got a 60 horse, two stroke uh, Mercury Mariner engine. And uh, this is 12 volt pump. So I went down to the local um, sport, Academy Sports here, picked up a new pump. This one is a 500 gallon per hour um, pump, 12 volt. It has a removable um, connection with the water the bottom pops off so you can mount the, the bottom screen part to the into the bilge and then the, the motor uh, snaps into it so you press in these two uh, buttons one on either side there squeeze pull the motor up and that so that's how you mount this and that's how you take it out and say clean it um, do maintenance on it things of that nature um, so anyway so this will be a little bit of an upgrade uh, as far as how much water it will move in an hour's time um, and certainly an upgrade from one that's not working at all well it, like I said it's working it's just you know it's pumping water right back into the bilge so <laughs> it's not working so anyway that's the plan we're going to work on that and then uh, should be pretty easy I've already, like I said I've already this one had the same top mount a um, little different design but you squeezed in these two clips on the side and this thing pops right up so this is the old one um, it's going in right down in there if you can see that that's where she's going and uh, I'm gonna go grab some stuff and get back at old it. pump okay now it's hard to tell, but you'll see the bottom. Anyway, there's the bottom part of the old pump, and there is the uh, three-quarter inch hose. Let me get my camera down in here. Okay. And so I've got a hose clamp on my hose with nothing. Uh, it's not attached to anything, but the piece of that hose fitting is still in there uh, and that's as far as I can there's no more slack on that hose. Um, it's kind of hard to get get everything down in here where you can see but if you look you see that it looks like a, a nail well that's the back side of a rivet so this pump is mounted to a piece of aluminum built in aluminum bracket that is riveted to the inside of the transom so that's going to be fun now you can I could literally get one arm down in here in this hole while I was working I don't know if you can see the end of the hose down there to the right and then to the left there's that little bracket it's got a rivet into the inside car going by inside of the transit it's got one rivet going through um, so 
on the left side in that bracket, that's where the, the bilge pump was mounted, okay? Now the hose is routed up behind, coming over here um, to the left side of the boat right here. This is where the bilge pump pours out into the lake. And that hose routes down here and around into the bilge pump. There's no access to any of that that I've found. So here's what I did. First thing was first. This dude, I had to use some pliers and I got it on there like this and just sheer brute force was able to pull it off of the, uh, the hose. So I got lucky there. Then this is the, the mount for the old bilge pump, right? It was riveted two times on that bracket. I just took my lineman pliers and just went in there a piece at a time and tore this thing apart. Finally, I was left with this little disc, you know, and it riveted, and I just used these, got up under it, and pulled it up. So that's how I got that part off. Now this was the worst part of all. This was the nipple, the barbed fitting, it used to be, let me find my old bilge pump. Where are you at? Ugh. All right. So, here's the old pump. This, sorry about the camera work there. This used to be attached to here. Okay, well it broke off inside the hose. This with one hand, I had I could only get one arm in there, folks. One arm is not enough. I'm just going to tell you right now, it's not enough. Um, but what I did was I was able to get some help. So, what what I ended up doing, I said, you know what? Forget this. Let's just use these channel locks here, and we just smash the crap because that that rubber hose. You know, it just goes right back into place. We just smashed the crap out of it with these until this thing broke up. You can see here where it broke. And it created so much, you know, we crushed it this way. It was still in there pretty good. But we turned it and then I crushed it this way and that's when it broke. And I was able to just easily slip these in here, grab that sucker like that, and just pull it right out of the end of that hose. So that's how we did it. That's what we used to do it. Um, Folks. So I've gotten the bracket out. <clears throat> Let me show you that. I don't know if you can see down in there. The bracket. I've had to cut as much as a, of it as I could off. Okay. Now. Let me climb down from here. And I'll show you what that it looks like. So build a, a, uh, a Z-shaped bracket. So that the bilge pump is practically touching the bottom. Okay, maybe a quarter inch above, just to keep it out of the silt, the sand and the dirt and stuff. So, but I'm gonna mount it right there on that, uh, I don't know what you call that frame. Um, it's like a C-channel, aluminum C-channel there. So I'm gonna mount this, so probably, probably not this one because it's too short. But I'm going to mount something similar to this there on that C channel. And then my new pump will mount to that. Okay? So that's the plan. Um, Ringo's chilling, trying to chew his cord up, his uh, leash. But uh, anyway, I'm going to work on that. I want to see if I can't go find me some uh, aluminum. Even though this is pretty thin it, it was tough to cut so see what I can find all right so I've laid this out here inch and three eighths that's how wide my C channel beam is in the boat four and a half inches that is how tall the C channel is from the top of it to the bottom of the boat um, and then this mark here I just kind of eyeballed it. That's how much room I need for, to mount this bilge to. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this right here. 
bend these into a kind of a z-shaped drill some holes probably here and here to mount it and uh i'll be right back all righty so here's our bracket all uh bent it's not perfect but you know what neither am i so there it is in the redneck vise i'm just going to leave it in there until i go ahead and drill holes i need to drill some quarter inch holes right here and then i'm going to drill drill and tap some quarter 20 holes in uh, my C channel down there. And then we're gonna use stainless steel quarter 20s lock washers. All right, folks, there she is, mounted. Um, all I gotta do is wire it up. Uh, I'm not sure what happened with my mounting screws. I put the bracket, laid the bracket down on top of there, marked the holes, drilled and tapped. And one of them doesn't match up. So it had one fastener when I started. It has one fastener now. I can live with it. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to take me a break, eat me a bite. Um, I'll uh, wire it up, dress up the, uh, the wiring a little bit, and test it out. All right. All righty. So here's what we got. We got some butt connectors. We got some NOAA locks. We've got the wires from the pump and the wires from the switch. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to try to preserve as much wire as I can. If I can get this thing to squeeze without twisting on me. Maybe not. <clears throat> well, let me get this goop off my fingers. Let me see if I can get this off without cutting the wire. No, that sucker's on there. All right, so we're just gonna cut it. Okay. Trying to preserve as much wire as I could. So I'm gonna strip about a half inch off. And then I'm gonna twist these together, okay? Now the brown, what am I doing? I'm fixing to put it right back on there. Don't be a dummy. Alright, here's the brown. For the pump. Get off the finger. Uh, let's see, right about there, half inch. Twist these together. And you can give them a little twist if you want. You don't have to get too carried away. Then I'm going to trim off, just get it even, just to get everything nice and even. Now, 
uh, I'm going to make me some waterproof connectors with this NOAA locks. And I'm going to fill that connector up. And then I'm going to put it in there until it bottoms out. And I'm going to use my crimpers. Put it in the center of the metal. Crimp her down good. Give her a pull check. Now you see that goop in there? That's going to keep that waterproof. Okay, so now let's do ground or the negative. Let's see if we can pull the plastic off again. Like I said, just trying to preserve as much wire as we can. Now I made these connectors waterproof. These normally come dry. These little butt connectors, crimp connectors are dry inside. I made them waterproof. I had some uh, underground, uh, some wire nuts for underground splicing that had that clear, oh, I don't know what you call it, just kind of like a jelly, just waterproof. Well, that one ain't wanting to strip. <clears throat> it's, uh, seen a little corrosion or heat possibly so conductors are miscolored or uh, discolored either heat or water be my guess I'm gonna use it because that's what I got and I bet it'll be okay what do you think I'm gonna twist that together real good I'm gonna trim that back just a little bit get the ends even I'm going to make me another waterproof connector with this NOAA locks. This is a ideal brand. You can buy this stuff at uh, any of the box stores, the blue store, the orange store, uh, just about wherever. It don't have to be the ideal brand. It'll be whatever. Just as long as it's for electrical connection, I guess that's all that matters. Might have overfilled that one. You know what I just did? Gosh dang it, what a freaking idiot. Man, I tell you. I get to talking, folks. And that's all I do right. Well, I don't even do that right. I just do it. But I can't do anything else. Well, we're getting extra practice is all I can say. You're getting to see it multiple times. I'm just going to wipe that on my britches. All right, let's cut her again. That done it. All right, so don't need that one. We do need this one. See how easy that strip? Try it. Yeah. Oh, this is the one that don't like it. You don't like it stripping. Mama raised it right. I just even what I do is I get the plastic ends. I don't even know if y'all can see. Probably not. I get the plastic ends even. And then I twist it together. And then I trim the ends even just like that what oh, stuck to my arm all right let me make another one now i'm trying to get it down in there in the bottom what i'm trying to do in the bottom of that connector all right i think we've done it right this time folks see these crimpers these are just uh, Klein lineman pliers with a built-in crimper. You don't have to use these. You can just use regular old automotive 
style crimpers but I use them because that's what I got and I know they work they do a good job now you're going to pull check that both sides and see you got goop all up in there now let me go turn the switch on here we go nothing that's awesome I don't know, maybe it's working, I just can't hear it. Oh, let's see. Let me turn it on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's humming away. It's a lot quieter than that other one. Can you see that? Hear that? All right. It took it just a minute to prime up. I guess. I'm not real sure. I had it on. Hang on, there's a car coming. But I had it on for, I don't know, about a good two minutes. And I couldn't get nothing to come out. So I got a little worried. So I ran this wire down my holes because I'd forgotten to do that before when I said I was going to do it totally forgot um, I actually blew in it and it there was no restriction so I thought well it's fine but I never did run the wire down through there well this time I run the wire down through there and I got a little bit of uh, foam out so I turned it off turned it back on when I turned it back on immediately it started sucking water so um, Oh, now it's working. <laughs>